Hello, everybody, and welcome to the second episode of the second season of the Grassy Tamer Podcast. I'm one of your hosts, the VO1 JKB Jackson. And I'm Mike, VO1 AX, and VO1 FOPs. And the topic today for today's podcast, uh, usually uh, in the last season we talk about what we've been after the past two weeks, but uh, as you can probably tell, uh, from the last episode and five books it's now, nothing has changed. We're still in the same building and we're recording this uh, after a smoke break. Yep. So, cheers. cheers. So, topic for this week's episode is art of antennas. So I've actually got a little note sheet prepared here, you know, with my little red marker and my random paper. Is Nothing it on official. Paper towel? No, it's, no, it's not, not an actual. Piece of paper it's not, paper it's paper not actual paper, paper this time. That I grabbed and blew my nose with <laughs> yeah. all over his notes. Yeah. So, um, we're going to be talking about various types of antennas this episode, but, uh, you know, there's a lot out there. Aaron, why don't you give us a rundown of many antennas that you can think of here? Just go for it. Just riddle them off. Just, 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 just do, go for do it. Do variations of the same design count? Uh, no. No. Okay. Like so, so, the basic There's platform, a dipole and there's a fan the, dipole, but I don't think... The basic platforms is either a dipole or another type of wire antenna, um, in that configuration of a T-top or a sloping V type. Uh, you have verticals, you have four squares, which is a vertical, again, phase verticals. Um, you have beams, you have mag loops, which are like desktop loops that you tune with a capacitor, and apparently they work well, I don't use them. Um, mobile antennas. Mobile antennas. Uh, sky burners, beams. Well, for, for mobile antennas, it depends on what frequency range you're using, because it kind of gets hard to work HF in a mobile. Sure. Right? Um, I've seen some guys use 10 meter, uh, like 10 foot whips with a big spring and an auto tune around the base of it and ground it off to your chassis. Yeah, working 160 on a big turn heel. Yeah. Um, uh, working Japan, middle of the day. Screwdriver antennas, so it has a big coil that, you know, rope moves up and down stuff on the inside to actually make <coughs> resonance. Bike tire antennas, they're a thing. Yeah, I've, <laughs> I've made one. I worked you have? One. I worked, next project. Uh, I worked two meters off of a set of bike like bike rims. I had one as a shield, connected to the shield with coax as a reflector, and the other one like radiating. So make kind of a thing there. So take take one or two or three and talk about it. But yes. So, so I got I got a small little list here of ones we're actually going to talk about during this uh, episode. Because there's hundreds, there's hundreds of there's hundreds of types of antennas, and, 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 and anything can be one. Anything yeah, yeah. Be right. one. I mean, like load any, this table as an antenna. You, load, load, up a bench, you can load up a bench there, and I know yes. people who have done that. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 You got to do gutters around the roof. Like. Right. So we've actually narrowed down. We had a small discussion, and we narrowed down some of the basic types of antennas. And by narrow down, I mean I have a small list here. You know, we're going to be talking about in this episode. Dipoles, verticals, beams, um, miscellaneous wire antennas. It's going to be your L's and J poles. The mighty like rhombics. Yes. No. Yes. <laughs> so we're being talked about. We're going to be talking about expensive antennas and mobile antennas and options for stealth. If you happen to be living in an apartment complex or something like that, or your landlord doesn't quite fancy the hobby, like mm -hmm. been there, done that. Yeah. So, <sighs> I have to say, um, starting off with the dipoles. Yes. The dipole is the most basic reference point that's ever used in terms of gain. Okay? It and, is. And efficiency. Yeah. yeah. Right? And beams measure by it. Like, it's yeah. it's always, too, like, how many DB gains yeah. over a dipole. Yeah. yeah. So the dipole is a good one to start. I mean, hell, it's the, probably the most basic antenna you can build. It's the most build. basic antenna you can build. It's the easiest one you can build because you don't really have to worry about anything. Yeah. Right? You, 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 you take two pieces of wire... You throw them up between two points, and you, you feed them. You sent to feed it, and, and that's you it. Cut right? the tune, and you're good to go. Yeah. We we've been um, running dipoles for years. Everybody runs dipoles, pretty much. Yeah, and, and the beautiful thing about a dipole is that it's it's basic. It is a basic antenna. Very cost effective. Could, yeah, like, you can uh, build one for twenty bucks. You can build one for cheaper than that if you find built, wire. Man, we have me and Jackson have built dipoles for when we were running eleven meters before we ever hand lops. Uh, we made them out of uh, speaker wire. We ripped out the walls. Um, we used uh, printer cable. Mm. Those big, heavy, like thirty-two pair oh, printer cables. Man, that was terrible. We went and spliced <laughs> that was like terrible. Um, we went and spliced like three lengths together to make each leg like eight-ish feet. Yeah, and, that was, and that was like, a bad day. 
bad day. It's, but what it, again, it can be done. It's easy to fix in the field. It'll work. Yeah. And it oh, it works. It just works. It works. <laughs> right? I don't know how, but it works. We, half, we got skip. Your basic half wave dipole over quarter wavelength pipes will work. It's yeah. a given. As long as it's sure, fed properly. Sure, right? Aaron has taken like Cat 5 cable. Mm -hmm. We've done that put too. On his, put on yeah. the, his 32 foot vertical when he had it off. Yeah. Ran a length of Cat 5 cable. And we've had a QSO on 160 meters. Yeah. Me and Aaron have done it. <laughs> now, it nearly burned. <laughs> but we've done it. <laughs> and he was running 100 watts. And yeah. yeah. But, but it worked. Right? It worked. So, so that's the thing with dipoles. Is that dipoles are basic. They're cost effective. They're relatively easy to install. You don't need towers or anything like that. You just need two trees. or Two different points on your house. Two different points on your house. We'll get to that when we get to anything. the stealth side yeah. of things. Um, and, and I love dipoles. No, I easy, right? They do have a bit of a directional side to them, though. Uh, if you want to look at some more advanced stuff, you know, radiation loads and stuff like that. Um, so, Aaron, how about you give us a little brief rundown on how that works? Right. So, it's relatively easy for you to have a 40-meter dipole if you can put it off 32 feet off the ground. And each leg is 32 feet long. Biggest problem I see with people is that they don't have a means to get dipoles up high. You can get them long. I see a lot of people running 80 meter dipoles, but only the 30 feet off the 30 ground. Feet 25, 30 feet yeah. off the ground. Yeah. So if it's not at a quarter wave, uh, technically, if it's at a quarter wave, then it radiates very well off of its broadside, which is it's supposed to do. Ground example. Effect, ground effects are canceled. If this, if this is your dipole, for example, right? And you have it center fed here, it's not going to radiate off the ends, it's going to radiate this way. Yeah. Right? It's going to radiate well, so perpendicular. And, and, and for, for, my, for my reference point, so you've got a dipole running north and south. Is the directivity east and, east west. and west? East and west? Yes. yes. Yeah, okay. If, if it's a quarter wave off the ground. Right. Yes. But okay. the closer you get to ground, the higher your takeoff angle becomes. Mm -hmm. right. And as we know for DX, we want the lowest possible takeoff angle. And that's why I love the vomit, but I'll get to that later. Um, <laughs> Mike, you can't stop laughing. Right? <laughs> this is man. It's insane. But he needs a ranch in Texas, boys. Has anybody got a ranch in Texas to donate us? We'll go down there and build we some Rombix. Yes, right? build but, some Rombix ranch. But yeah, and um, you can make a multi-band. Like, Fan dipole. Lots of things you can do. You can off-center fed, you off-center feed them and choke them and... We you did you didn't. And that's when you fed. get into like some people will say Carolina Windham's. Well, a Carolina Windham is an off center head dive hole. Pretty, pretty much. much. Yeah. Like, the, the the total length is a one full wave of the freak you want to operate. The lowest freak you want to operate. And the way you do it is that it's one third fed from one end, one third wavelength fed from one end, and two third wavelengths fed from the other. And it becomes one full wave at the lowest freak. And they work very well. Mm -hmm. Right? Um, I ran one for years. Yeah, part of your uh, feed line with becomes... my remote station back in the day. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The only downside with that is that part of your feed, as we, as I know from first hand, hands experience, part plural. of your plural, <laughs> part of your feed line becomes a part of your radiating element on certain frequencies because you get wavelength pairs and a bunch of physics goes on. And then generally, like off center feds require a little bit more heavier duty tuner to yeah. Yeah. handle it. Whereas, whereas a simple dipole, if you got, if you want to get on the air, you got your license, you can go pick up a, a nice, you know, relatively inexpensive HF rig with a built in tuner. You can throw up a dipole for forty meters, clip it a little bit, clip it a little bit, get it nice and tight, nice and right, and your your rig can tune it. You haven't got to go adding in any extra tuners. Extra yeah, exactly. Extra that, right? The so. bad, the, the downside of it, the off center feds and the Carolina windows, whatever you want to call them, is that you need a heavier tuner and you need a good ground and choke. Bite, 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 bite. <laughs> First hand, I know what I'm talking about. Yeah. You will get bit if you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's only barefoot, it will hurt. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, they're not yeah. fun, especially down, no. especially down on 160 where the voltages <laughs> are yeah, insane. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, yeah. So that that kind That's of that was, our yeah. Stuff. Um, next one I have is verticals. Yep. And a vertical over a good radial field, if you can do it, because I know some hands they don't have the space to do it, or they have to run a compromised vertical. Exactly. I'll get to that later. 
But I think if you have a vertical over a really good ground, a good, a good like a mesh, or a good six, ground is six, a six, good six, ground plane is essential. Good radio field, right? a good radio, radio field, all yeah. a radio field, and and you can construct a radio field out of many different things. Like a lot yes. of people are using metal chicken chicken, chicken wire, wire apparently right? working wonders, right? So the idea is to get a good radial field under a vertical. Yeah. Now that doesn't mean you got to have 128 quarter wavelength radials. No. You can if you want. You got the time. Uh, this this is kind of my area because for the past six years that's all I've been eating yeah. and breathing is verticals. And the reason why I chose the vertical was because, well, being visually impaired, I, I needed something with I needed something with low maintenance. Yep. Right. So the vertical antenna I have, me and my XYO were able to reasonably manage it. Uh, and I didn't have to deal with towers. So that's a beautiful thing about a vertical. Yeah, your vertical is yeah. dead easy, too. I mean, right. we've seen videos of it taking it down, yeah. putting it back yeah. up, your, extending your it, vertical, shortening it. Your vertical is low maintenance. Yeah, that's, very. The, that's the thing with verticals. If it's just a vertical with no traps, so that's yeah. a different thing. That's mm -hmm. a different thing. Too. But if you just have a 32 foot, or 68 foot, or whatever quarter wavelength the lowest frequency you want to operate at, Vertical with a half, even a half decent radial field. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty much maintenance free. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was running my vertical, I'm sure you guys have seen it. You know, I had the big eyes on top of it and like had now my seven eighths of an inch nylon rope and it was yeah. way overkill. Oh, yeah, for sure. That has withstood the worst storms that Newfoundland has had for the past three years. So, verticals are relatively maintenance free. The only downside of verticals is that um, if they're not done right or if they're in a confined area, they can have a higher takeoff angle. Yeah. Um, Another thing with the verticals, too, is, I mean, you mentioned your vertical stood up to wind significantly, and, I mean, I've seen it. It withstood the March windstorm yeah, when verticals all over the place were breaking. Something K an hour ago. Yeah. yeah. One the one thing about verticals is you do have to worry about the material that it's made out of, and if it's made out of something like aluminum and you're in a high wind area, uh, make sure you guide it. We got Mike's uh, vertical guide, which is a good thing because I feel like if we didn't so be down. it'd be down by now yeah. yeah or at least be bent or there'd be some repairs that had to be done on stuff so. yeah yeah so so verticals are good um, and i found as, as a final note on the verticals um that my 43 foot ground mounted i think works as well with a reasonable radio field i've got 32 radios underneath uh now you might not be able to put 32 you can put 16 right as many as many as you many can, as you can, can within them. reason yep Right. Um, so I mean, you can go and you you can subscribe to all the different DX books. And, right. I put them down to the best that I could, within reason, and my antenna is phenomenally. You know, it, it, it works phenomenal. Your antenna does an amazing right. job. It's, it's, it's gotten me award with you know awards. Yeah. And, but um, I can honestly say that any zero, you know, forty three foot design, properly radialed, properly fed will work as good, if not better, than a dipole at 40 feet. Oh, yeah, for sure. On 80 or whatever. Yeah, yeah. You, get, you get that omnidirectional yeah. radiation yeah. pattern as well, right? Yeah. I, I think my vertical beats any any wire antenna at 40 feet. For sure. Right. Another, well, another thing to add about, uh, so, well, to a degree. So, to a degree. I'll yes. give you a two a degree. Well, a multi-band, uh, let me rephrase then, like any multi-band antenna at 40 feet. Yeah. Um, I think my vertical... Any dipole configuration, yeah, yeah. you'd beat it. Yeah. yeah, like if you had a curtain, if you had a twenty-five element curtain away well, at yeah. seventy-five well, feet, well, yeah, yeah. yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, but what I'm saying, okay, so even if you had a resonant dipole at forty feet, yeah, it would it, still probably be. It probably yeah. beat the vertical. Right? Another thing about uh, verticals is like you can build them for relatively cheap too. Yeah, um, think your vertical that I bought off you, I totaled it was two hundred bucks, and hundred fifty yeah. of it was rope. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, so, I mean, if you downgrade the rope that you got, depending on your area, I mean, we got, what are they, three, four foot aluminum tent poles? Yeah. And there's how they many? They were $13 a piece. They were, yeah, $13 yeah. a piece. You can get them on sale. Got, you can I just buy straight up aluminum. Bucks. I got them for sale for two yeah. bucks. Well, my, ma my mask cost me 250 bucks, uh, 250 bucks put off. And it's the same design. Same design. Yeah. Identical design. Yeah. They're, re they're relatively cheap as far as some antennas go. Uh, not as cheap as dipoles, but they are. You know, still there. Um, they're relatively easy to put up, very low maintenance, and I mean, hell, verticals honestly are one of my favorite antennas next to beams. 
Um, the next antenna we have on the list is beams. Beams! And some people, they swear by beams, and some people, they just, they don't think that people should be using beams. For the record, another name for beam, Yagi. Or Yagi. Yeah. Right? Same or, thing. Or, or log, log periodic. Yeah. It's not the same thing, but they're kind of, they're both the same category. Similar, yeah. Same category. So, um, we live in Newfoundland, which you guys know by our calls. And I hope you figure that out. I hope you figure that out. <laughs> and this area is terrible, absolutely terrible for beams, logs, yaggies, whatever you want to call them. Like, even though a log is different. A lot of aluminum in the air. Yes. Yeah. And they a lot of weight, a lot of wind loading, a lot of ice. They normally require a tower, so there goes your price all through the roof. So the big problem we have here in this island is that the amount of salt in this area is we. Ridiculous. Oh yeah. Right. Um, I mean, being on so a if, salt if, island or being on an island surrounded by salt water kind of does that. <laughs> yeah, obviously. It's one so of those if, things. If you have, let's say, if you take a beam that has a twenty-eight foot boom, I'll just use twenty-eight feet. I know some of them are that big. Oh yeah. Has, has about like you know five or six elements onto it, weighs a couple hundred pounds. Uh, you're gonna need a heavy tower to hold it. Yep. Chances are, it's, chances are it's going to be like... One like of these a, super titans uh, from it's trial. It's going to be like yeah. a gay size tower. It's going to be half decent size. Yes. Yeah. And, um... To put it in perspective, I kicked tires on a S... Uh, what was it? The S200. <coughs> Pardon me. From Trilon. Because I dream. I dream big. I dream of winning lotteries. And, Don't we all? You know, building the ultimate contest station. So, I checked out... JK antenna, and the antenna I wanted uh, at the time was the mid tri forty. That sucker weighs one hundred and sixty pounds. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think the boom is twenty four feet long, and I think it has like uh, ten or twelve elements. It weighs one hundred and sixty pounds. It's not a small antenna. It's not a small antenna. No. And it's rated at 100 miles an hour survival. Now, that's all well and good. But 100 miles an hour survival, is that 100 miles an hour survival in a Newfoundland type climate? Or, a or 100 miles an hour summer wind in, in Texas? Yeah. So let's be honest here, when aluminum gets cold, it can sometimes get brittle and that just... Yeah, that, that's just well, the recipe so, for disaster. The, the beam wasn't such a great big deal. Uh, I mean, yeah, okay. Like, a really good expensive beam, you're going to cost three, three, four thousand dollars Canadian. <clears throat> Excuse me. Easy. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't such a big deal. Three grand, all right? Um, you know, all right. So there's the beam. Now, I need something to put that beam on. So I like Trilon Towers, and I didn't know much about wind loading and everything else, so I contacted a Trilon specialist. I said, this is the antenna I'm thinking of buying. What kind of tower do I need to ensure that that thing stays up for at least five years without a problem? At the very least, yeah. At the very least. I mean, you don't want to spend three grand and have the thing come down next winter. Yeah. No. You'd like to get five years out of it at the very least. So I sent him the specs on it. The tower I needed was the S200. That sucker was $4,999. <laughs> U.S. No, no. Canadian. Oh. Plus shipping, plus taxes. Yeah. The tower was going to cost Ooh. me about 7500 to put up the $3,000 antenna. Yeah. So, it's long so long. Now, now, we haven't had, now we haven't had a rotor yet. Yeah. Need a rotator to put that on. Yeah. All right. So looking around different rotators, Alpha Spids, Yezu, and, and High Gain. Contacted different people about rotors, well known DXers up here in Newfoundland that contest win and everything else. Settled on the Alpha Spid. Uh, it was the Alpha Spid Rack rotator, was it had the capability? That sucker was going to cost me $2,500 plugged in. Yeah. So now we got $7,500 for a tower. That's not including the backhoe work and the concrete that I would yep. need to put that thing in with. So you can call that another two grand. Oh, yeah. So, and then the rotor, 
So now we're at $95,000, $10,000, we are at $12,000 just to put up a $3,000 beam. So it's it's not cheap. It's, and it's, it's not. It's not right? cheap. But if you in the environment that won't damage a beam... Take then, down in K3LR's yeah, take, case. Take yeah. somewhere down there. It's probably a good idea. If you have the money to invest and you really want to invest in... Yes. Research your beams, research your options, your towers, and, and go and do it. The problem we have is that we can get 80 mile an hour winds for no reason here. Yeah. yeah. For no like, reason. For no Literally, reason. tonight right. in an hour, we could have gusts of winds big enough to blow a cabin down. Right. 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 Um, we can get 140 click, 150 click gusts. We can, we can get ice here up to two inches of ice. If not more. Yeah. For no reason. Well, last, last, no reason. Last, last March, or last April, whenever it was, we never had no wind. But I circulated pictures of my little diamond antenna. Yeah, frozen solid. Right, with ice. The coax, which was RG8X. 8X, the, 8X the, yeah. The thin stuff. Yeah, that was the size of... That was the size of my thumb. Yeah. yeah. With yeah. ice. Yeah. The radials uh, sticking out of the diamond. They're about as big as round as my thumb. Yeah. yeah. So now, I got to thinking... Uh, I've been gifted a nice uh, Mosley beam, a TA-53. And, you know, there's some Mosleys up here in use. Widely used, heavy Mosley beams. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I got to thinking now, if that was a Mosley beam up at 45 feet out here at the cabin. In a clearing, because we're in a clearing. Off we're in a clearing, yeah. 45 yeah. feet off the ground. But no wind, like but still, yeah. how thick would those elements be? Well, she'd come down. She, she, she'd, she'd come, come down, down from the down. weight. The weight load would, would come down. And right? speaking so, about that... Um, a local ham actually uh, around here, um, due to the last snowstorm we had, he's got some issues with his beam now. Uh, he went out. He went out to look at it one More night. Issues again. Yeah, and he went out to look at it after the storm, and the beam was tilted. So despite the wind chill, he climbed up the tower, and uh, two of the bolts that actually held his rotor on sheared. Yeah. So, yeah. Bad. So that's the problem with, with beams here in this province. But again, we, if, if it's, it's hard to do here. If you're in an area that can do them, well and well and good. Yeah. They're great antennas. The performance gains, like if you live in a nice area. Oh yeah. Uh, now from one extreme to another, you can go and get a hex beam, a five band hex beam for six hundred dollars US. It's true. It's true. Put it up at thirty feet on a push up mast. Get yeah. yourself a four fifty rotator from Yesu. Great little antenna. Oh yeah. You yeah. you'll be you'll love them and there's plenty out there on YouTube with regards to hex beams. KOA Technologies, DX Engineering, they all do a hex beam. And they're they're wonderful antennas. I'd love to have one. Oh yeah, for sure. But put that sucker up here. Down she comes. She wouldn't last the winter. <laughs> wouldn't last the winter. So, so anyway, moving on. And yaggies and stuff. So yeah. going to wire antennas miscellaneous. Aaron, while you're talking about this, I want you to bring up the Skyburner antenna you had. The Skyburner? The Skyburner. That's what we used to call it. It used to work. So, carry on. When it comes to wire antennas, all different types, miscellaneous, they all feed back to, I think, three common designs. Are there some variation of a center fed top, a T top tile dial? Oh, yeah. Or, or a V, yeah. um, an L, or a Rhombic? And a rhombic is, is the beast. Here we go. Itself. Um, very talk with dipoles, beat that to death. V's are the same thing, except on a 45, yeah. done. Uh, inverted L's, L's I, I, I like them. Inverted, yeah. inverted L's are pretty much a vertical made out of wire that has the top of it kinked over. Kinked over. We're one and run right now We're for 160. Yeah, yeah, because we don't have the resources to put up a 120 foot shunt fed tower for 160. We cannot do it because it's only three of us. We can't put up a mast that high. We can't do it. So permits and all this other is, garb. So, well, we just we don't have the resources to do it. No. Between the three of us, we can't logistically no. do it. So we built that inverted L for yeah. how much all total? Put in the ground, concrete in, guys up. The mast was two hundred something. The, the mast was two fifty. The So call it plus accessories. Call it about four hundred. All squared away. That's a little on the high side. But call it uh, no, that that I'm I'm say around keep three. in mind I had a toroid, right? Yeah, which yeah. which I didn't use. So at the end of it, so that L out there really is just a box for the feed point, mm -hmm. bit of wire for fifty bucks, and the mast. So you could easily build that for three hundred dollars. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But you might want to have a few extras, spice it up a little bit. Call, call it, it max three fifty. Call it max. All you, that's all yeah. you spend on a inverted L for one. So so like it is like like you just said. 
you have your radial field, same as a vertical does, uh -huh. um, and then you have your wire that goes up in a supported fashion. We have it going up a, a metal mast, which I don't know if it helps it or not, but I, I'd no. assume it does. It does the job. It does it's, the job. We're supposed to take it clear of the mast, I've been told. It's so, Who it's, cares? It does the job. <laughs> I'm not touching it. It's, it's ice, the, the metal mast is isolated from the ground. In my opinion, it's not having an effect on it. Yeah. Um, so it just goes up the mast. It's, it's stood off with that far anyway, so it should be fine. And then it just kinks over after about 32 feet. That's about it. Heads back the rest of the whatever tree. it is. Nice tree, tree on the hill. Yep. To a tree on the hill. That's it. Keeps it nice and level, level, nice and high off the ground. So that's that's a good uh, antenna if you can't get the vertical height that you need for a quarter wave on your fleet. Now keep in mind, however, that a quarter wave on 160 should be about 120-ish feet. There's numbers, yeah. There's numbers yeah. around that. In a chart, right? Um, that's if you do the 234 over your freak will give you the, the quarter wave in feet, okay? Math. We have found that formula to not work very good with the inverted no, ups. Yeah. No, no, that, that formula is fucking garbage. We have, one, we have 136 feet of wire on that house. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's what makes it resonant, right? You have a point where the SWR drops into a nice curve, bottoms out around 1.875. And a reactance also follows suit a little higher up the... Yeah, I'm trying to visualize it here, but like it, we have a low SWR point and a low reactance point. And two of them kind of balance out between 1.875 and 1920. Yeah. In that center of the band. That's the sweet yeah. spot. Yeah. So it, it works really relatively well. So that's that's enough for Perfect us. for 160. And it does a great job receiving, too. Yeah. Yeah. By God, it's fantastic for receive 80 meters and below. Yeah. So that that's the L, self-explanatory. That's pretty that's much pretty most it. wires. Explain the sky burner you had running for a bit, because that was kind of a puzzling the sky one. sky burner, well, I think we're getting or, off track. We're running no, this is a wire. This okay. is a wire. We're good. So, sky burner, or NVIS. Now, this is a thing that some people um, are interested in, just because it's different. So, with NVIS, a near vertical incidence sky wave, your takeoff angle is almost 90 degrees. Almost 90 degrees. Let that sink in. That means that your RF is going straight up and it's coming back down within your 500 mile radius. The way that it worked for me, and this is how I dumped. Now it might not sound conventional, but this is what I dumped. Keep in mind, this is back when it was first licensed. This is back, this is back in the AKA foot. days. Yeah. I had a 26 foot DMX Del High light duty top. That's the tower, the 26 foot tower right there. I went up the tower with my coax and stripped off the, the outside of the coax, ran it all back, crimped on a, a ring to it, bonded it to the tower. So that was grounded. That was my shield. Okay? I took the center of it and bonded it to a piece of number 14 wire that was 120 feet long. And it sloped down to a little six foot mast I had in the ground, 120 feet back. Just rotate that, yeah. That's how it worked, okay? And boy, did it ever work good. It worked really well locally, right? On, on it worked one, good for on, DX, too. It worked good on 160, yeah. it worked good on 160, and it worked good on 80 locally, because, it, like, like I said, it was only 26 feet off at the maximum, and the minimum was only four. So my takeoff angle, even if it was parallel to the antenna, it was still at a sharp 60 degrees. Yeah, and we made some fantastic 160 contacts on it. Really big DX for us at the time. Well, for us, yeah. yeah. Because anything was DX for us at the time. True, outside true. of province. Yeah, uh, but true. No, we actually got some good DX on, with that, though. Logs on the big. higher bands, like 20, 17, and 15, when they were still open at the time, um, where it was so long, it was 120 feet long, even with barefoot 100 watts, I worked in Saudi Arabia on phone one day, and I worked all the way down to Hawaii the next day on 15. So it worked relatively well, and uh, and that is my uh, my talk on the Skyburner. Skip that. We pretty much covered expensive antennas. <laughs> mobile antennas are a pain. Yeah, um, I got a couple notes to say on mobile antennas. So if you're taking your operation mobile, there's a couple options for you. Um, quite a lot of options. Yeah, there's quite a lot of options for you. So you could freaking load the bumper of your car if you wanted to as a dipole, yeah. right? Um, that comes into the stealth option later. But 
I mean, let's see what we got here. What is what's the face on truck? Uh, what's the brand again? Getting it's a tire heel. Tire heel antenna. Yep. Those, from what I hear, are fantastic. You know, you can work Japan on 40 meters driving down the road. Um, they're very wind resistant. They're not very big. They're only about as tall as this at max. So, I mean, they're pretty good. They got a motor in the base of them with a coil. Moves and up and down. Moves up and down. Tuning controller. So that's basically how it tunes itself. Um, and then you can run that thing with the gain and a bit of power and work anywhere. There's also, uh, what are they called? Hamsticks, I believe. Yes. Um, you take the mount, you slap it on your roof. Then you just basically swap in and out these antennas that you can keep in your back seat or whatever. You know, they, they look, One for 40, one for 80, one for 160. They look really small. Well, the hamsticks look identical to, I know some of you 11 meter guys call them fire sticks. Yeah, yeah. The, the black fiberglass and on the inside you can see the wire like coiled up. Coil yep. up a lot. So pretty much hamsticks are the same thing. My blood was on it. Hamsticks, on hamsticks are the same thing, except they're usually like six to seven feet long. Yeah. And they have, if, if you're on low bands, like if you're doing like 80, I know the 80 meter one has, you have to put two of them together. No, no, no. No, so I've, just I've, get, get, I've, I've seen no, some. It depends on what one hustle. you get. Not the hustler. I've, I've seen 80 meter hamsticks. We have to put two pieces together. Right? Two pieces of like four foot section hamsticks. Yeah. And then, you know, put it into your thing. You might as well just, you know, tape them together. You know, some mm -hmm. guys just tape them and have the one eight foot length they can carry it. Yeah. Right? So. There's that. There's, and then all, there's, there's all kinds of options. Then there's obviously your two meter mobile, which, I mean, you can put a two meter dive hole on your bumper. You can. Two meter dive hole on your bumper. Well, like, it wouldn't be like the best idea. You can do I've it. Seen people do it. You can do gets, it. Like, gets you around locally, I, right? I had a two meter dive hole, a vertical one, <clears> on, <throat> a, on a piece of two by four inside. Mm -hmm. The best thing I think that you could do if you're just sticking to two meters only in a mobile would be a two meters uh, five eight plate. Oh, yeah. On your yeah, loop. nice mag mount or something. Simple mag mount. Run the coax in through the back of your car and run it up to your radio. If, if you, know, you want to make it very more, easy to hide. If you want to make it a little more clean, because I know some people don't like the whole mag mount look. Yeah, scratchy you can and easily, stuff like that. You can easily get an NMO mount and the hole in your roof, drill through your loop, and the antenna is firmly fixed. Mm -hmm. No yep. mess, no, 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 you know, no fuss. But even if you don't want to do that, if you if you can't drill a hole through your roof for various reasons, and you're worried about mag mounts scratching, take a small little piece of cloth. I mean, wipe down the surface beforehand. Mag put that cloth with, down. Mag put that mag. Scratch. Put that mag mount down. Like, even if you are worried about it scratching, like that's the ultimate <laughs> just, solution yeah, just, I've seen well, to fixing just, it. Just lift off the mag mount once every two weeks. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. That works too. Like wipe I mean, it off. It won't, it, won't, it won't scratch. Everybody gets all hell bent about all scratch and paint. But I mean, uh, most of the mag mounts you can buy nowadays from like Diamond and, and all of these, they got this Teflon coating underneath. Yeah. That's not going to scratch your paint. And that and they're strong enough to not move. And and and, as and, well. and the thing yeah. is too, guys, like before you slap it on, read the instruction. Leaflet. Yes, read the instructions. Right. It says not to put the mag mount down wet. Now, what happens when you put a magnet on a car or on a metal surface that's wet? It's going to slide. It's going to trap moisture. That too. All right? So, I mean, I've had no trouble with the mag mounts that I've had on our on our key SUVs. All right? Lift them up once every two weeks and wipe them. Mm -hmm. And that's really all we can cover for mobile. So now, we'll just, because we're running out of time here, if we haven't gone over already, We'll just briefly touch on some stealth options. Say you live in an apartment building or something like that, and all you have is a balcony and the inside of your house. Aaron, I'm, what can people I'm do? I'm going to assume, because if you're living in an apartment building, I don't imagine that a lot of people are geared towards HF as much as they are 2 meters and 70 centimeters. So the best thing I can advise for someone looking to do stealth operations 2 meters and 440 from an apartment would be either A, a little dive hole on the inside of your apartment, um, I've seen people uh, actually make a little beam, make all the elements for a two meter yeah, beam, little, mm -hmm. little oh, yeah. loops, right? yeah. and, and take the elements onto the walls yeah. into the positions that they should be. And as long as you're not and, running and, and too much power, that works. And, and, and even if you're right, you want 25 or 30 watts, you'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, you'll be fine. Now, um, for HF uh, operation though, HF operations there are different. some nice options. There are, you, yeah. MFJ makes an apartment antenna. Uh -huh. I can't re recall the model number, but they, they do. S9 makes some good gear. Mm -hmm. uh, you could throw out a little tripod on your balcony. Mm -hmm. 
Or yeah. hell, even getting back to the hamsticks. If yeah. your balcony's aluminum, yeah. take a hamstick, mount it down, and there you go. Yeah. Right? Now, it's a Stick compromise. It off to the side. It's a compromise. Um, that's that's another thing we failed to really touch on. These some antennas over the other have varies of compromising. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, if you take the the Hustler hamstick base mounting system or a mast or whatever that you can buy fold over mast, and you screw a hamstick into it on your balcony. Don't expect to get the performance that the, the JK antenna mid tri forty is going to give yeah. you at sixty six feet. Yeah. No. Right? Definitely not. But you probably will get out. Yeah. And There's given the good band conditions, you can work probably some nice DX. There's another antenna I've seen someone do for in apartments or in a house if you can't have an outside HF antenna. And you can only run about 25 watts through it. But if conditions are good, that's all you need. Especially yeah. if you're doing digital. Yeah. Okay. All it was, all it was, wasn't a mag loop. No. It was a piece of number 12 wire along the edges of the operating Oh, room. yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just, they just brought it in the center with 8 foot, uh, eight inch spacing. Brought it straight down into the ladder line tuning jacks of the, uh, of the tuner. Yeah. Ran 25 watts through it. Just so it's just random, random wire, wire then it was called. Pretty no, much. It wasn't a random wire because a random wire is fed against the ground. Whereas this here was a physical, like a square. Yeah. Okay. Except the opposite end of where the two legs would be the equal length was cut. So it was electrically separated and insulated through like a egg insulator. Mm -hmm. Right? So that it, would ne it wasn't actually one piece. It was two pieces. It was like a dipole except it was... Like strung around the roof. It was like ladder line fed with like six feet of ladder line up the wall, and then just like like that. It worked. It would work. Not the best, but I mean, it's, hey, it's what you got, right? You're in, a, you're in an apartment. You can't yeah. put an antenna outside. And a loop is another one. The you're, mag you're, loop. The mag loop. Yeah. Right, the mag loop. You can run. You can get those that can cover eighty to ten meters. They can take. Uh, if you get a high powered one and you're lucky, you can get them that can run, that can handle up to 150 or 200 watts. Mm -hmm. uh, most of them uh, are generally 25, 35 watts. And, and they work really well. One other thing, getting back to dipoles, you can tell I really love dipoles. If you got a bank in, balcony, run a dipole along the, say this is your balcony face, this is your wall, this is your door to your house, and you get your balcony coming out this way. Run a wire up and out, just across the edge of your balcony. Easy as that. You, it's going to be small dive depending on your apartment are, size. Dive poles are really easy to hide, especially if you're in like the basement. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right? You want them along, talk inside. People put them up in their attics. Yeah. Attics. attics. Uh, that's another thing uh, we forgot to touch on is say uh, your landlord doesn't want you to have antennas. You can straight up load your rain gutter as an antenna. It takes a small bit of modification, but you can do it. Or just straight up drop a wire. Just drop a wire into your rain gutter. URP, of course, but I mean, hey, it, it works. And That's nine it. chances out of ten, your landlord won't see it. Well, pretty much. I mean, you've been talking antennas for years. Yes, we can yeah. talk antennas. There's low for resources. Whole but uh, this was a good topic to touch on. Some of our favorites. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, uh, some here. experience, you know, Newfoundland. But uh, yeah, if you like this episode, please drop a like and consider subscribing. Uh, hit that bell icon so you get notified when we do upload. Be the first to see it. Um, leave a comment to uh, let us know your thoughts. You know, constructive criticism is always appreciated. Just trying to be negative. Um, and sticking with the uh, regular grassroots theme, I'm gonna say seven three, and uh, catch you guys three. in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thanks guys. Seventy three. Take her easy.